Hi guys and welcome back to Parsley Sidings Part 2. Well, postman's been, the wife didn't see this arrive and she didn't notice it set on the shelf up on the wall there. And today we have another box which should be for Parsley Sidings. This is coming the post from the UK so I know it's definitely trains or we're going to be very disappointed well I won't be but you might be if it's uh, Land Rover parts I must have the bluntest vegetable knife Ha 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 ha, here we go. And the wife definitely didn't know that this lot was coming. Let's spin this round. Now they're all mainline, as explained previously, because they got the good coupling blocks on them, wide couplings, which is why I picked this brake band, big D coupling. Okay, cab full of motor, but uh, that's not a bad looking loco, is it? We'll have a closer look at these in a minute. So we have a loco, a, what's that, an eight plank, seven plank, with a coke wagon anyway. Another coke wagon, with the top rails. One, two, three, four different uh, tank wagons, a low fit according to that, an open wagon and another open wagon. Finish it off the North Eastern brake band. Let's see if it actually works. So we're going to just try the uh, battery test here just to see if, the, see if it runs. Well, that's not looking promising, is it? Nothing at all there. So it may be a case of... Uh, we get to do a video of trying to fix this or see what's wrong with it. But we can save that for another day. Although I could try another battery just in case. We seem to have a bit more life in this battery. It just about there, yeah, just about runs on this uh, battery that's probably quite flat. Promising, it works at least. We'll see when we get it on some track how it really performs. So we now have two locos for parsley sidings. Here we have the rolling stock that we're going to use on parsley siding. So obviously you know about my Great Western Pannier Tank and the toad that I've bought to match. Well, you know, we've got to have a toad with a Great Western Pannier. And what we now also have is a mainline J72. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 other wagons to make up a train. Now let's go through what we got. We have the little northeastern low fit, Royal Daylight tank wagon, uh, Wadsworth coal wagon, Warrener coal wagon, and a Shell tank wagon. Now these are all in mint condition. The boxes are a bit dog-eared but the wagons themselves are absolutely immaculate. We also have the BP tank wagon which is exactly the same as what I had in my train set all those years ago. United Molasses MOY Thomas W Ward are both coke wagons and the Northeastern brake van. So we now have all these trains to play with and Despite what people are saying, yes, these are second hand, not including these two. These all come as one uh, package off eBay. 
85 pounds, working loco and 10 immaculate wagons. There are bargains out there if you want to look for them. Maybe not a totally up-to-date modern locomotive, but still got separate fitted whistles, safety valves, handrails, and there's a lot of fine detail fitted on the bodywork. Who cares that it hasn't got sprung buffers? Who really needs sprung buffers? We don't, especially not in this scale anyway. So I am really happy with that, 85 pounds. But there is something that is missing. We've got no track. So let's have a look at that. So parsley sidings the track plan. What we quite often see people do with this layout is just use straight track and it's not visually very interesting. And we want to do something a little bit different to that. We're going to start off with track coming in from the left hand and in a curved configuration. Then we'll go through the yard to a little head shunt, again not straight. We'll then add a loop and a siding to give us somewhere to play with the wagons and add maybe a little spur up this end of the yard. We could add a disused little station building, not quite this grand, Bradshaw signal box and somewhere to service the locos. We could add then the trees and the foliage to add some interesting countryside and maybe even a river just to make it even prettier. And hey presto, Parsley Sidings is created. Right, let's look at track. That isn't going to work. So we need to decide on what track we're actually going to use. So we're looking at sort of train set standard track. So I have gone for some Pico Streamline sets of points. Code 100, they're Intel Frog because it saves all the electrical gremlins that can occur with electro frog points and we're looking at a layout that uh, a starter could build here so we're going for the basic basic easy to use set track points which obviously you need a few of these fish plates to join together some ordinary bog standard Pico flexi track code 100 now the reason I've gone for code 100 is because some of the rolling stock that we're going to use on this layout, like these, is of an earlier design. Older wagons, so the flanges aren't as fine. I would have gone for code 75, which I've used in the past because the rail profile is smaller, closer to scale, although the sleepers and everything else are just as out of scale on the Code 75 flat bottom rail as they are with uh, this stuff. So that is what we're going for, purely because it's one step up from a train set, set track. So streamline points, streamline flexi track, one packet of rail joiners, and that should be enough for what we want. For those of you who don't know what an ingle nook shunting puzzle is, is Quite simple, you have three sidings, three sidings, you have one track which will hold five wagons, two tracks that can hold three wagons, and a head shunt for driving off up and down that will also accept a loco with three wagons. So the object of the exercise is you don't start with a whole yard. You have eight wagons. Here we have eight wagons and your loco brings in the eight wagons and you now have to sort out five wagons, if I keep my thumb out, five wagons into a consist. Out of the eight wagons, you can only move three wagons at a time 
Hence you can only fit three wagons on the loco up the head shunt and you can only leave three wagons in these two sidings at a time so by having eight wagons you've got room for three part wagons to allow you to shuffle things about and you pick at random the five wagons and the order that you want them in so then you shunt the wagons around on the three tracks a maximum of three wagons on the loco at any one time and assemble a five rake wagon so by moving you know, a couple at a time if necessary maybe one and you have to juggle them around so you might put one over here if you want these in a different order move one out then pick this one up pick that one up again and assemble things like that so that is the shunting puzzle so when I say in that video that what I see people do with an ingle hook is literally because they're using train set so you know they've got straight bits of track you know okay this is flexi but you know in the uh, train set you don't have flexi so you just lay everything dead straight and everything runs parallel but it's not exciting not everyone obviously does do that. A lot of people do change the design a bit so it's a bit less formal. The reason I said that is because a lot of videos and things that you do see of the Ingle Nook Shunting Puzzle, everything is dead straight track because it is train set track generally at the end of the day. But with a bit of imagination, just by adding a curve here and there, it can change the look of the layout less boring shall I say um, to the eye you know it's still just as much fun to build still as much fun to play with but we can make it just look that little bit more interesting with a bit of imagination what also takes into account is the fact that I'm in Australia and getting set track points or streamline points or whatever here in Australia is limited so all I could actually get was short radius right hand points and a couple of Y shaped points as well but that worked in my favour because that is what I wanted to do in the first place to create a bit of non-linear visual interest shall we say so as you saw from the uh, video presentation which I hopefully is going to get nominated for an Oscar or something like that we're going to have track coming in from the right here. A little bit wiggly, not a dead straight bit of track. And then we're going to go to a Y shaped point. So we're actually going to come in over here, just like that. And then we're going to have a short bit of track to the low code servicing bit. So now we come into the yard itself now we're going to foreshorten this just so you can see we'll put that there so we're going to have room here we're going to pretend these two wagons are five wagons so we're going to have another point here a little Y shaped point which will start the run round loop and this other right hand point we're going to have at the end there so we're going to have a loop here so if we've got five wagons here we're going to be able to get three wagons in there I reckon that's the plan for that and three wagons in here and a head shunt over here for running the loco around so we can come in into the station, round the head shunt and then sort out the shunting that we need to do. One other thing I want to discuss on this video before we put this one to bed is what I'm going to do with the points. Now this layout is going to be designed it's DC for one loco only operation. So all the track can be wired up to be live at the same time and intel frog points means there's no insulated fish plates or anything to deal with no switching the polarity of the points everything can be live at the same time but to make things improved 
so that I'm not relying on these point blades here to make the contact. I am going to permanently link with a wire underneath. I'm going to snip out a couple of these bits of support on the moulding there and I'm going to link with a soldered piece of wire these two rails on this side together and these two rails on this side together. So that way all the time the outside rail is energised so are these and they continue the feed on nice and smoothly. So hopefully the only bit that might get a bit dodgy in time is this here. But um, by keeping the back of the rails clean hopefully that will maintain sufficient cleanliness and electrical conductivity to ensure that these switch blades are kept live but they should be fed from this rail anyway so fingers crossed it makes everything electrically simple we don't have to worry about stay lives and everything like that and there's not a lot of plastic in the frogs these days in the olden days this whole block here would have been one big plastic lump but things have moved on things are a little bit better that should give us trouble free running but there is one thing I am going to do to make separate sections should I wish to use it. Now this is going to be to the loco servicing shed and that is the way up the head shunt, you know, the, the main line, branch line heading off to the distance where we'll be doing the shunting. I am going to isolate this end of the point via a switch so that I can actually park a loco in the loco servicing area and bring in another one up the branch line just for playability for if we want to do anything else other than just do the little shunting puzzle and this is basically how big the layout is going to be excluding the arrival and departure part of the head shunt here um, we have room for five wagons in this first road head shunt to run round get three wagons in here between the points and that will allow three wagons in the siding there. The next video instalment will be we'll bring the shelf down and we'll get this all laid out possibly extend the shelf slightly widthwise just to give us a little bit more room for some scenery and we'll hopefully even get a loco running around the track and hopefully you'll have as much fun out of this sort of layout design making your own layouts if I've inspired you or anything like that by the time we get to the end of this little project um, but yeah it amazed me of how mad my last video went so thank you for that if you watched the last video and that you're back again you know it is appreciated see you for the next one hopefully we'll get a train going stay safe have fun like and subscribe again. Thank you. See you soon. Bye for now.